Sydney and Melbourne, consistently ranking among the most expensive cities in the world to live in, thanks to the shocking costs of rent, utilities and groceries, making the list alongside New York, Singapore and London. Today we're going to be talking about the cost of living here in Australia in 2024 and all the monthly expenses you need to expect if you're considering a move here. These figures have gone up so much over the past five years and in my opinion are getting quite out of hand. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Vivian and I make content on my experiences working as a data scientist here in Sydney, Australia. I currently own and live in a one bedroom apartment in the suburbs of Sydney. A quick disclaimer is that cost of living can vary significantly depending on your state in Australia, your city, your suburb and your preferred lifestyle. I will try my best to have my numbers be a very generic guide, but they may be slightly biased towards Sydney as this is where I was born and raised. Let's start off with income first. So according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, the average Australian salary is around $90,000 pre-tax, meaning that once the government takes their big cut, you are left with around $5,700 per month into your bank account or $1,300 per week. So note that most salaries also come with a 11% super fund contribution on top, automatically contributed by your employer into your nominated super fund. And obviously this cannot be touched until you retire or you undergo financial hardship. So now that we know how much money is coming into our accounts, let's chat expenses. So your largest expense is most likely going to be housing. You can either choose to rent or buy property, but if you're only planning on staying a short amount of time, then renting is your way to go as it's a no strings attached method and you can also choose a six or 12 month lease. If you were to rent a small studio, the cheapest you can find and not be too far out from the city will probably set you back $350 to $450 per week. A one bedroom apartment will cost you anywhere between $450 to $750, depending on how new the building is and its location, but you can probably get something decent for around $500 a week. Any decently located two bedroom apartment will be around $650 per week. And if you are choosing and renting a house instead of an apartment, the cheapest you can find is probably $700 for a three bedroom house here in Sydney. For the sake of our calculation, let's estimate around $500 per week on our housing expenses for a single person, bringing our monthly total to $2,200 per month on housing expenses. Next, moving into utilities. Now these are non-negotiables, but can come as quite a surprise as most of these are billed quarterly. The cost of water, gas and electricity has gone up so much in the past few years and the average statement for each of these now sits at around $200 to $300 per quarter or around $80 each per month. If you own property, you'll also have to pay council rates which are around $300 to $400 per quarter and your last housing expense as a property owner would be your strata for your properties which have a shared ownership like your apartment blocks or your townhouses. Now this really depends on the size of your property and how many lifts, pools or gyms that you might have in your apartment block but can range from either say $300 at a low end to somewhere over $2,000. For our hypothetical calculation, I'm going to assume that you are renting, meaning that you don't have to pay any of the council or strata bills, bring your monthly utilities expenses to around $250. Our next category is our miscellaneous personal costs. So firstly being mobile phone plans. The average phone plan costs around $30 per month if you already own your device. Setting up internet for your home property will cost you around $70 per month, depending on your provider and your chosen internet speed. Public transport here is not cheap. If you are choosing to commute to and from the office, that'll cost you around $10 every day or around $200 per month. And alternatively, owning a car will be pretty similar because you have to pay for insurance, registration and fuel, which also really adds up. This also does not include the cost of taking toll roads or paying for parking. Moving on to another large category, groceries. I don't know what's been happening over the past few years, but at my local grocery store, all the products have shrunk in size, but the price tag has definitely increased significantly. I would say the average weekly cost of groceries for one person is around $100 per week or around $450 per month. To keep these costs down, I personally try to only buy things which are on sale and I often shop at fruit markets where I find the cost of fresh produce to be a lot more reasonable. Moving on, eating out of restaurants also adds up very, very quickly. A regular takeaway coffee will set you back around $4, but if you're getting a iced soy latte, that may cost up to $8. An average two person meal at a restaurant where you get a dish each with no drinks or sides can be around $40 for two people. Brunch at your local cafe is getting incredibly more expensive with every dish coming to around $25. 
and a more high-end restaurant with a set menu will be at least $80 per person, not including drinks. And cocktails at a restaurant are super expensive, ranging from either $15 to $30. Yes, you heard me right, $30 for a tiny cocktail. I would say that on average, if I were to catch up with my friends twice a week at relatively decent restaurants, I'd be looking at spending around $50 to $60 on dining out, depending on where we go, or around $250 a month on dining out. Thankfully, there is no tip here in Australia as our workers are getting paid pretty well. So what you see on the menu is what you have to pay. So last category, moving on to health, beauty and entertainments. So your gym membership will cost around $25 a week or $100 per month. Men's haircuts range between $15 each haircut to $40 depending on how premium your hairdresser is. Women's haircuts, I would say $50 to $100 depending on your cut. But the minute you add in bleaching, perming, treatments, coloring, that can easily go over $500 for a haircut, which is pretty crazy. A consultation with your doctor will vary between $100 to $150 and your annual dentist checkup will cost you around $300 depending on if you have health insurance or not. And for entertainment, one cinema ticket will cost you around $15 to $20 and your Netflix and Spotify memberships on average can cost you around $10 per month depending on the kind of plan you are on. So overall, in a hypothetical scenario where someone is earning $90,000 pre-tax, their take-home income is $5,700 per month, they would be spending $2,200 per month on their housing expenses, $250 per month on utilities, $100 a month on phone and internet, $200 a month on public transport, $450 a month on groceries, $250 on dining out, $100 on their gym membership, and another $50 on ad hoc entertainment and memberships. If they average out $40 a month on a haircut, and also put away around $50 a month for those annual dentist and doctor checkups. This brings our total expenses to around $4,000 per month, meaning that we can save the remaining $1,700 and put it towards travel or for a rainy day. Obviously, I am no financial expert. I am just here trying to navigate this crazy cost of living crisis here in Australia in 2024. I have also been trying to cut down on all my expenses where possible and saving and investing as much of my money as I can. I hope this video has helped those of you looking to move to Australia in 2024. As always, take care, stay safe, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.